You guys may have noticed something very interesting happening in the PC gaming space. GPUs aren't necessarily getting faster, but the frame rates reported are going up. This is thanks to a brand new technology that is being implemented called FrameGen, and it is being implemented in both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. NVIDIA did actually beat AMD to the punch here. They implemented the technology and then marketed it in a way that was a little deceptive. They were stating that their GPUs for roughly the same cost were getting double the frames, even though performance wise, they were more or less exactly the same as the previous generation. AMD on the other hand has not actually made such outlandish claims and tends to stick to their rasterized performance. But frame gen is fascinating because in the future, I do see it being a major contributing factor to what GPU you might actually buy. You see, games aren't getting that much harder to run. And thanks to engine optimizations and things like Unreal, we can get graphics that are near photorealistic without increasing the power budget all that much. And both AMD and Nvidia are actually starting to push the power of their GPUs just a little bit too far. The wattage that is needed to power a 4090 or even a 7900 XTX is quite a lot. On top of that, the space needed for a 4090 has actually made multiple cases that are very, very popular unusable. So we are running into a problem where the amount of power needed for an upgrade and the amount of space needed for an upgrade is just outweighing the benefit of the upgrade. This is where I think frame gen is going to become extremely competitive because if you can't necessarily put more power into it and you can't necessarily make it bigger, then the next step is to make software to make it faster or at least perceivably faster. In the near future, we are going to have displays that are gonna be capable of running at 350 frames per second, 1440p. And even 4K will eventually be capable of hitting those higher refresh rates. And when that happens, we're going to need hardware that can match it. And the truth is, we don't have it yet. And while there will be advances in technology, improvements in efficiency, and better GPUs down the line, the immediate solution is going to be something like frame gen. Now, I've talked about the history of it. I've kind of talked a little bit of it. How does it even work? Why does it work? And more importantly, why did it take so long to come out? And that's a very interesting question because frame gen in essence is something that we actually do in video editing all the time. It's interpolation, but it's dynamic interpolation that is being done on a non-fixed camera in a non-fixed scenario. All that FrameGen is doing is doing that in real time on a game that is currently running and being controlled by a player, which is actually a lot. And that's probably why this technology took so long to come out. On top of that, AMD versus Nvidia does change a lot in how this technology works. Currently, Nvidia has it implemented into DLSS or their exclusive upscaling and rendering technology. And while DLSS is really, really cool, it is fairly locked down. AMD, on the other hand, has open sourced pretty much all of their software package to make it work across multiple GPUs. So while DLSS cannot be used on different GPUs, FSR, on the other hand, can work across older NVIDIA GPUs. It can work with Intel's GPUs. And honestly, it can work with more AMD GPUs then the newest version of DLSS can work on NVIDIA GPUs. Because of AMD's mindset of having these features roll back as far as possible, there are more GPUs out in the wild that could use it. But the problem is market share is a big thing and NVIDIA has the mind share and they have the market share. So what is AMD to do, but then to make a cheeky little setting inside of their software that allows you to force it on even if it's not been implemented. This is actually something they did recently with Radeon Image Scaling, which actually has improved as of late. Now, if you want to enable fluid motion frames in a game with your AMD GPU, all you're gonna need to do is actually come into your Radeon software. Now, you can 
go ahead and select the game from the main menu of games that you've got installed or you can go ahead and change the global settings now to change any specific game just select the game from this list go down to amd fluid motion frames click enabled and you're good to go it's going to enable anytime that game is running in full screen and is running in at least dx11 or higher now if you want to enable it globally we're going to need to change the global settings there is a shortcut that you can take where you can go into any specific game global gaming experience and then that will take you to the global gaming experience where you can also set your hype rx quality eco mode whatever you want to set along with amd fluid motion frames enabling it specifically for anything connected to gp1 uh, because gp2 is just on the cpu so uh, more importantly if you want to enable it globally you can enable it here so let's start with a game that actually can benefit a little bit to actually using fluid motion frames, but it is also a use case on why I don't don't think it's perfect yet. So fluid motion frames can drastically increase the frame rate of a game in specific. So right now we are running. Oh, gosh, uh, we're, we're first off running at 4K because my capture card is 4K. Uh, we're generating around 80 90 frames and we're playing at 185 frames per second so that's what it's generating and you'll notice when i move the mouse really quickly that frame rate's going to drop right back down to roughly where it would be if i were playing this without fluid motion frames uh, and if we move around you'll see that it is actually staying active with the fluid motion frames it's only at those quick mouse movements and that's because there's this sort of built-in trigger mechanism to amd fluid motion frames that allows it to compensate for induced input lag so what nvidia's solution does is it actually will just kind of run this across the board and that increases the input lag of the game ever so slightly and there is still a noticeable increase you'll actually see that there is statistics in the amd measuring software that allows you to see how much lag you've added in which is pretty nice but overall it does make cyberpunk an easier game to run at higher frame rates at higher resolutions on amd gpus the frame gen is pretty cool here it works and i mean it looks good enough we definitely have enough frames to actually make use of a high refresh rate monitor and that is just really really cool all around but digressing a little bit this is a case where i would actually leave it on if i weren't hitting the desired resolution and frame rate now my main display which is the same display just being pumped through a capture card so data is not quite communicating correctly uh, i would be running this at an ultra wide 1440p resolution and it's a little bit easier to run and honestly fluid motion frames ends up not being as necessary but it is very useful. I do really like how to, the effect of it. There is still some shimmering, which you can see actually while we're standing still here, but that might be being introduced by um, AMD's uh, FSR, which is also enableable in this game. So now let's go into a game that actually has FSR 3.0, the built-in version of frame gen that honestly is just better in every way. Uh, this might not work properly because of the capture card, but I will uh, definitely describe it based off of what I've got from our testing. So Starfield is actually a game that actually has built in frame generation, which is part of AMD's FSR 3.0. And FSR 3 is actually great because as you can see from this FPS counter, what it's doing here is it's actually syncing it to what it thinks the monitor is. And through the capture card, if I were running at 4K, it would be appropriately setting it to 60 FPS. Now, the actual monitor that I have is 1440p and can run at um, 144 frames per second or 144 hertz. So what you're seeing is frame gen is automatically taking us to the correct refresh rate of the display now what's really cool about this is it means that a game like starfield won't hit the pc nearly as hard as it normally does this 
usually is a very difficult game to run, but instead what's happening here, which is actually really freaking cool, is we're running this thing at, you know, a nice solid 60 frames per second, which it thinks we're supposed to be. And the PC is chilling. <laughs> it is, it is kind of V-Synky, but at the same time, if you aren't able to hit it, it will generate the extra frames and make it work, which is just great. It makes this game infinitely easier to run and a little bit more enjoyable. I've been replaying it recently. This is a new character that I've just been replaying it with that setting enabled because it makes the game that much better. So there's a lot to take away from all of our experimentation here. One, this technology is really cool and I do really like it and I'm excited for the future of it, but I'm more excited for FSR 3.0 and 3.1. The implementation in Starfield is so good that it just blows away anything I expected with this technology. And I think that that is the most reasonable usage of this technology. It is designed to hit the exact refresh rate of my monitor, which is something I have preached in the past. In fact, this video is still blowing up on YouTube and it's all about talking about resolution, pixels per inch, refresh rates, and how to not kill your GPU because you're overworking it. Frame gen, specifically fluid motion frame gen, is lacking in this department. It will run as hard as it can. Something that's not reflective in the numbers or the testing is how loud the GPU is when it's using this feature. It is running 100% all of the time. And you don't need that. Most of us don't need that. When testing, yes, it makes sense. Run it as hard as it can. But for the most part, I think most gamers want to run their games at the best quality setting they can, at the best refresh rate for their monitor, and get the best picture out of it. Linus did mention recently that you should actually run at a higher frame rate than your monitor's refresh rate if you are playing competitive games and want to have the most accurate information for the least input lag. Frame gen is not gonna help with that. Frame gen definitely does increase the input lag. And I do think that in most cases, you really should only be using it on single player games. You can honestly lower your quality settings in competitive games to get those higher frame rates. And I do think that that's the better option. And using something like Radeon image scaling might actually help if you have to run at a lower resolution. Our GPU today though, is a weird outlier because it is the best AMD GPU, meaning it is the best at using this technology. And because of that, it's admittedly overkill. In most of these games, we achieved frame rates well past the points that I would deem it necessary. Doom Eternal is a perfect example of a game that literally I turned on ray tracing. I've got it running at 21 by nine. I've got it running cranked and it still is over 200 frames per second. That game runs beautifully on AMD GPUs. And the craziest thing about it is it's running ray tracing. It's doing all the things that typically would boggle this GPU down. And I don't need frame gen. So where I'm standing with it is it is a really cool feature. I think in the near future, it's gonna be very useful. I think if you're running a higher resolution than I am, which honestly the pixels per inch on this display is already great. I'll have to push further into the higher resolutions to see if maybe we can get a use case out of this. But I do think that frame gen's a little bit limited on its use cases in the present. But with lower end GPUs, it might actually be something that gets you up to 144 Hertz at 1440p. And if that's the case, then use it. I do think that it's one of those things that you do need to use to really see if you like it. Cause it does have some weird, weird quirks for one, if you're the kind of person who's sensitive to motion blur, you're not gonna like it because it induces motion blur. And it only does this because it's an easy way to actually decrease the input lag that you're gonna feel when using the feature. It's clever, it's a really good way to hide it, but if you don't like motion blur, you're gonna hate it. And in some games, it makes it absolutely horrible. <laughs> yeah, uh, I tried running it in Skyrim because I love Skyrim, 
it's an old game. I do use Radeon image sharpening in it. I, and unfortunately, it, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work very well. Uh, to describe it, it's just a hitchy, ugly mess. And I would just rather run at the 60 FPS. And that's not something I say lightly because I really don't like running at 60 FPS on a 144 Hertz monitor. So the point is, much like every other AMD setting, try it out, see if you like it. If you do, you get a higher frame rate. Maybe uh, arbitrarily limit it a little bit in the engine so that you're not running your GPU as hard, but it works, it's cool, and it definitely will be a lot more interesting as more games start to use FSR 3.0 instead of having to force it on using the fluid motion frames. But that is where I'm going to end it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching this video, consider checking out my playlist on AMD's feature set. I have made several videos about every single feature that has been added to the Radio software over the years. I've been using AMD GPUs for so long that I just have that experience. But if you are interested in having me check out an NVIDIA GPU, there is one that if the cards align, will be entering into our studio soon. There is a good chance that a 4080 Super might be in the works uh, for us to test. And if that's the case and it does actually pan out, that will be the first major NVIDIA GPU launch? No, no, we did the 30, we did the 3060, I think. Did we? If we did, uh, I'll put a card up there to that one. But point is, I do want to actually take a look at the equivalent side to the 7900 XTF. So the point is, I'm looking at the next high-end GPU, and of course, we got an ARC GPU planned very, very soon. So lots and lots of stuff is in the works, and... If you like this kind of content, subscribe, because there will be more. And if you don't like this kind of content and you got this part of the video, I am honestly impressed. You can check out any of our other videos about peripherals and all sorts of stuff. We do VR stuff too. So thank you guys. Uh, I know this was a little bit of a long one and I'll see you in the next video. Wolfie, out.